Hello, I have to admit that it's been a while since I've used ArcGIS the last time, but in this case I would like to show you how to get data from ArcGIS into a PostGIS database and also how to get it back. So um, I'm starting here with a blank project, but before I will add some data or stuff like that, I would like you to check whether you have added or enabled the data into our upper interoperability uh, extension. So this will be needed to use um, PostGIS database as far as I have understood it. I need to make sure, okay, I don't know it exactly, but this was the only way it worked on my system. So let's add some data here to our, our um, example. And um, I'm using now, well, let's find out connections so let's create a or connect to a new folder here no go to own documents so this is always or oh, this is new to me now because I've used ArcGIS uh, I think one year ago last time so let's work with that Yes, tutorial, no. Uh, let's go with that. And with this. So this is now my uh, feature set, which has some attributes in it, like kids and classes, stuff like that. That's about 1,000 points. And I would like you to get this into my database. First of all, I added a connection to my database. So just oh, I can close this here I can remove it to make it new uh, yes so what I have done I've added a database connection PostgreSQL which runs on localhost and I'm using Postgres as a user I provide the password for it I would like to save it that's it so now I have the connection to my local running PostgreSQL installation and as you can see we already have some spatial data sets coming from the PostgreSQL extension and what I would like to do now is I would like to add some data. So normally you will probably do something like this, import and that's it, and export. But I think that does not work with PostgreSQL datasets. So what I'm using now is the data interoperability tools in the toolbox. And I would like to say, I would like to make a quick export. And the input layer for the quick export is my raw data file. Um, the output data set is something we need to be in the right format, right? Okay, so let's check the format PostgreSQL or better set PostGIS. So we'll use PostGIS, say OK. And the data set is OK, let's say schools. So we use the same as source coordinate system. Let's check the parameters, localhost 5432, the common port. Database is called tutorial. And um, the username is Postgres as well as the password is on my local system. Special column type will be fine. So we'll, we will go with that and try that out. So just press on OK. This will work now in the background. We can open up the logger here. So it was already working. I hope that works now as well. So that looks cool in the moment. So it took 3.4 seconds and we haven't used any um, any SQL statement on that. So now let's have a look here back again. Let's refresh the connection and there it is, tutorial public. Let's double click on it and so you can see that this is a point file and you can simply drag and drop use a common identifier field and that's it. So sometimes you might be interested in not using all the data, but maybe a filtered of version of the data or something else. So what I'm using in this case, or what I've used in this case, is a query layer, which is quite fine. So we have a connection. 
let's check it out. Yeah. So this is a connection to the database and we have the raw data. You can see the columns in this case, but we would like to use maybe a query for that. And that's a, yeah, small. And the small one is selection. Well, we will select every field from yeah, raw data where, well, let's say kids is less than 500. We will validate this. Validate, validate it fine and we will just make it finish. So this adds now a new query layer to our database, uh, to, our pub, uh, to our project. And as you can see, the number of points is quite small. Now, this, this is just a selection, but PostGIS is, has much more to offer to you, especially PostGIS functions. So let's make a new clear query. Uh, at data, we will add a new query layer. We will use the old connection here. And once again, we will use this. Select star from public raw, whatever. But what we will do now is we will use, yeah, we will, first of all, we are interested maybe in the ID and in the number of kids. And we also would like to use the geometry. But in this case, we are using a special function. And what we are doing is we will select ID, kids, and ST buffer of the geometry. Now, the problem is now that the buffer function uses a radius, and the radius given here is in degrees, and we cannot work with it. So we need something that is based on meters, and EPSG 4326, so normal, normal latitude, longitude coordinates, doesn't work with that, so we transform it to that Mercator, and we can do so with the built-in function of uh, of PostGIS. So this is ST transform. Now we would like to transform the geometry to 3857 and apply a buffer of 1000 meters. And due to the fact that we are interested not in EPSG 3857 coordinates, so we have Mercator coordinates, let's transform it back with the function ST transform, of course. And, well, I think we need to write it like this. And back again to 4326 from public raw data. Specify a name. Of course, we would like to have a name, and this name is buffer. So let's validate it once more. Seems valid, and as you can see, the query is not ending with a semicolon in the as new, uh, normal SQL statements. But um, let's finish that, and this works now in the background on the database. And let's find out the, as you can see, it's a polygon layer, so this is cool. And we will zoom in to a certain area. Let's say here, and you can see perfect circles. Well, not really perfect, but in our case, the, the problem is that the whole project is based in W uh, or WGS84. So when we change this to 3857, double click on it, then you can see perfectly fine circles. Now, so now I have shown you how to get data inside PostGIS database using the data interoperability tools and also how to store or get it back from it. So let's add those examples, this query into the database again. So we'll use quick export once more and just say the buffers. And once again, create the model PostGIS. Well, buffer underscore 1000 is a name. In the day or the data set name, the data set is once again tutorial. So, and go with that. Let's check the log again.
Looks good though. Oh no, FME is closed. So that's a pity now. Because that might conflict without. The scheme that does not exist. Was it written different? Oh, okay. But, um. Maybe it's a question of the name, so we will rename it. And use once more the quick export. I'm always interested in the log so I can see what is happening in the background. But once again. Oh no, it was successful at the moment. So I think it was a problem of the name due to the fact that we have here a, a normal name like schema and database and table. So now we are just working with buffer 1000 as a name. We can check once more in the catalog settings here. Uh, refresh our connection to localhost and as you see there we have the polygon layer and we can easily add it to our um, to our project here and there we are thank you very much for watching take care and goodbye